So what is a trial balance? A trial balance is a list of all accounts with balances. Let's take a look at an example of the trial balance as well. So from this journal ledger, we can see a summary of all of these individual account balance in a trial balance. So here you have the trial balance. You can see now we don't have that much detail. We just have the account, account number and name, and then the, whether the balance is debit or credit and what is the amount of the balance. So remember cash at the end of the month was 8,300, inventory at the end of the month was 2,500 and so on. So this is a summary of all of the balances. You may recall, I mentioned that assets usually have a debit balance and which is exactly the case in this case. Accounts payable, if there was a balance would probably be a credit balance. But in our case, in this example, we have already paid the amount for accounts payable. So there's no balance there. Similarly, owner's equity, we have a credit balance by default. And then we discussed also that all income accounts usually have a credit balance and all expense accounts usually have a debit balance. So again, you can see all the debit and credit balances are equal. And this is a very good summary of all of the accounts in the books and what are their balances at any given point in time. And when I say any given point in time, as you can see, it says trial balance January 31st. So this is information as of January 31st. However, if you wanted to see all the transactions that took place, you could actually go back to any single general ledger. So again, for example, for cash, you can see all the transactions that took place in the month. And here you have the final balance of January 31st. Now this trial balance is a very important report. From this report, we prepare financial statements. The financial statements include the balance sheet, income statement, also known as profit and loss statement, cash flow statement, changes in equity, and comprehensive income. We will take a look at balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow from the entries that we have learned so far. And changes in equity and comprehensive income are two other statements which we will look at a little later. So going back to our example, as you can recall, assets, liabilities and equity are reflected in balance sheet while income and expenses or sales and expenses are reflected in the income statement. So first we are creating the balance sheet. So we focus on the asset liability and equity account. So this is a very, very small balance sheet based on the entries that we have done so far. The, these balances you can probably remember now. We have a cash balance of 8,300. Again, it's coming directly from the trial balance. Inventory, 2,500. That's the sum of current assets. Furniture, we know, is a non-current asset, and the balance at the end of the month is 20,000. So we have total assets of $30,800. On the other hand, we have no accounts payable at this point, zero. So our current liabilities are zero. However, we have owner's equity of 30,000, which is this. And then you see retained earnings, which is really the accumulated profits at any given point. So for the month of January, with the sales and dividend income and the cost of sales and rent paid, we know that our profit was $800. So that is reflected here in the equity section because again, this profit belongs to the owners, belongs to the equity. So it is shown in the equity section. And you can see that the total of assets and liabilities and equity is equal. This is our balance sheet equation or the accounting equation that we discussed earlier.